to the staff to do that? They all would have agreed. That's what these people signed up to do. And yet the director goes, no, you know, we're, we're just, uh, just no. Like, we're not going to take that risk. And this is, I think, it says so much about the bureaucratic character of how government works, right? The people who rise to the top of, of these governments. Um, it's about risk management for them, right? It's about never being criticized for something. And this is, mm. if, look, if we want to get really controversial, and this is something that'll, that'll haunt me uh, because people will bring it up uh, again and again and again. People ask about, you know, uh, people still criticize me. <laughs> in the book, you know, I, I talk about aliens and chemtrails and things like that, and the fact that they're, uh, there's no evidence for that. I went looking on the network, right? Um, and I, I, I know, Joe, I, <laughs> I know uh, you want there to be aliens. Uh, I do. I know Neil deGrasse Tyson badly wants there to be aliens. Uh, and there probably are, right? Uh, but the idea that, that we're hiding them, if we are hiding them, I had ridiculous access to the networks of the NSA, the CIA, the military, all these groups. Um, I couldn't find anything, right? So if it's hidden, and it could be hidden, it's hidden really damn well, uh, mm. even from people who are on the inside. For the past 65 years, astronomers have been riddled with the question known as the Fermi Paradox. Where are all the other intelligent beings? Although there have been multiple UFO sightings reported across the globe, the lack of inconclusive evidence made all the claims fall flat. Does this mean humans are the only intelligent civilization in the entire universe? Or is there another reason we haven't heard from them? U.S. government whistleblower Edward Snowden recently made some shocking statements that reveal why human scientists believe we are alone and the real reason behind the government's recent interest in UAPs. Brace yourself as we explore the alien conspiracy from a completely different angle and give you insight into what really happens behind the scenes. The existence of extraterrestrials has been a controversial topic since the beginning of modern history. But after the end of World War II, UFO sightings became too frequent to ignore. The only problem was that despite credible witnesses and testimonies, the U.S. government refused to entertain alien and UFO stories and maintained a rigid stance that deterred other witnesses from coming forward. However, this year has been a game-changer for UFO theologists and eyewitnesses as, for the first time, the government seems willing to discuss controversial sightings and reports. It looks like everyone is fully invested in the topic, with the White House, Senate, Congress, and even the Pentagon giving their seal of approval to discuss UFOs openly. With the media covering every developing aspect of the investigation, we have also seen a sudden surge of public interest in UFOs. But this sudden shift in the narrative surrounding UFOs has alarmed everyone, leading to widespread discussion and astonishment. Why is the U.S. government finally ready to discuss this topic, and that even with full media coverage? Why consider the existence of aliens now after vehemently denying it for decades? Edward Snowden reveals the secret behind this bold move. Once you find out why the UAP Congress hearing is getting all this attention, you will feel very differently about the alleged reverse engineering program. But before that, let us give you some context on who Edward Snowden is and why his statements matter. Edward Snowden is an American citizen who worked as a computer intelligence consultant in one of the most prestigious government organizations. In 2013, Snowden leaked highly classified information from the National Security Agency as an employee and subcontractor. His disclosures revealed numerous global surveillance programs, many run by the NSA and the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance with the cooperation of telecommunication companies and European governments. The leaked information shocked the entire nation, raising serious questions about national security and individual privacy. Obviously, the government wasn't happy with their dark secrets being revealed, and Snowden was charged with two counts of violating the Espionage Act of 1917 and theft of government property. The Department of State revoked his passport, but two days after the U.S. Department of Justice unsealed his charges, Snowden flew to Russia, where he was eventually given asylum. For the last 10 years, Snowden has lived in Russia and continues to highlight important issues requiring the public's attention. Here comes the moment of truth. Are you ready for it? 
When Snowden appeared on The Joe Rogan Show, the host asked him if he had found any evidence of alien existence in his years of service, to which he answered, no. It's not that he doesn't believe aliens exist, but he confessed he found no information on their existence in the U.S. government's database, even after combing it thoroughly before he left his job at the NSA. He also wrote about his discovery, or lack thereof, in his recent memoir, Permanent Record. So according to Snowden, there is no inside information on UFO sightings, crashes, non-human biological material, or a secret UFO reverse engineering program that would substantiate conspiracy theories. But he also admitted to the possibility that the information is hidden so well that no one can view it. Then, is there a reason why the U.S. government is so interested in discussing aliens and UFOs suddenly? According to Snowden, there is a reason, and it's going to blow your mind away. Snowden believes that all of this UFO talk is just a distraction to take everyone's mind off of what's really going on inside the United States and what it's doing in other parts of the world. For example, the U.S. blowing up the Nordstrom pipeline was probably the biggest story in a hundred years. After all, the government carried out one of the most intense ecological terrorist attacks of all time against their allies in the European Union. But there was no media coverage. Instead, news channels were covering this Chinese balloon story, making it up as if the Chinese were trying to invade the United States. Snowden has reason to believe that the U.S. government uses UFOs and alien stories to divert the public's attention from more pressing matters. Once the media and the public look another way, the government is free to act however it wants, without repercussions or criticism from social groups. Maybe that's the intention behind this year's Congress hearing on UAPs. Perhaps they wanted Americans to focus on conspiracy theories and covert UFO reverse engineering programs instead of what the U.S. government was really doing. Do you agree with Snowden's ideas? Is the U.S. government feeding false information about UFOs to the media in order to busy audiences in frivolous matters? It's definitely a possibility that shouldn't be ignored. Also, if Snowden's assessment is accurate, the public should be more concerned every time the media and the U.S. government starts discussing UAPs and possible alien encounters. After all, it would serve as a sign that something big is happening behind the scenes they don't want us to notice. Once Edward Snowden appeared on Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast, Star Talk. There, he discussed one of the possible reasons why we haven't heard anything from outside our planet. We bet you never saw this coming. He suggested that aliens might have such strong encryption techniques that human scientists may not even recognize their message for what they are. This is how Snowden explained it. If you look at encrypted communication, if they are properly encrypted, there is no real way to tell that they are encrypted. You can't distinguish a properly encrypted communication from random behavior. You see, in the lifespan of any civilization, there's only a short period when they don't have the expertise to encrypt their broadcasts. If we look at the signals we've sent in space to communicate our presence in the universe, they are all open messages. The problem is that we are expecting the same in return. However, if the civilization sending a reply is advanced enough, they will use some form of encryption to send their message. But scientists on Earth may not be able to recognize their messages. Snowden isn't the only one who thinks scientists have simply not recognized alien broadcasts for what they are. Others like him question the SETI Institute's assumption that extraterrestrials will send us a message in an obvious way that our technology could detect. If we think an alien civilization may be advanced enough to communicate with other interstellar neighbors like Earth, why do we believe they would resort to old technology to send their messages? Wouldn't it make more sense for them to use the highest level of encryption they've achieved on their planet when sending signals out into space? What do you think? When Snowden expressed his encryption concerns with Tyson, he jovially replied, Only if they have the same security problems as us. That's certainly another way to look at it. Don't forget to share your opinions in the comments section below. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Also, subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell for more thrilling space videos.